One of the best parts about being on safari for 15 days is that you get to become quite familiar with your equipment. And a lot of that equipment is extremely heavy. So what I want to talk about today is some equipment that I've found to be quite useful. It's small, it's lightweight, but does it have what it takes to keep up with the demands of being on safari? So I want to have a little chat with our friend and workshop participant and incredible photographer, Jim Pickerel, and he's sitting next to Andy Williams. Jim, what's new in your bag of tricks? We've been playing with a smaller camera. This is the Olympus OM-D M5, uh, micro four thirds camera, smaller and lighter than Here, my 7D or a 1DS. <laughs> Let me see, which do I want to carry from uh, Terre Haute, Indiana, to New York, to London, to Dubai, to Nairobi. So this one, what's special about this? This is a 100 to 300. This is a 100 to 300, but on this camera, it's the equivalent of a 200 to 600 millimeter right. lens for a full frame DSLR. So for a lot of us, we've been talking about this lens for a long time. Nikon's two to 400, it's a great safari lens. Super sharp, you know, but it, it's heavy, eight, nine pounds, and after a while, you, you feel it. Um, could something like this actually replace something like that? It certainly can provide excellent images for many subjects. Right. I don't think it's quite as responsive as the Nikon for the very fat, like the your Kingfisher. The Kingfisher yeah. this morning in flight. Kingfishers would be a test. For yeah. That lens. I mean, yeah. But you, you did get rollers with right. that lens in flight, mm -hmm. which is not an well, easy I, task. I locked focus on, right, yeah. because we were given distance from it, and then I waited, and then. Fortunately, I was able to click <clears throat> catching focus or continuous focus is not going to be as fast. I, I would as tend to agree with both of you guys that, you know, this system right here is not going to replace, you know, the yeah. tr long lenses and the prime lenses and the, the big pro bodies that, a lot, you know, guys want when they come here. Right. But we all are carrying two and sometimes three cameras. Right. Can this type of system be, you know, a suitable and usable right now second body for people? coming to Africa? I think so. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to seeing the pictures I get back with the cheetahs from this, because I, I shot lots of them the other day. And you uh, look pretty comfortable in the chair, Jim. I am. <laughs> Holding that size of camera and the IS, 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 the IS works so well. I've been using it on the GH3. Right. And that's what's been fun, is comparing these two cameras and how they perform with that same lens. But you just looked so comfortable sitting there you know, it's without a beanbag and you were firing away. It's easy. These three lenses will take you from 24 to 600 millimeters, and this will take you at 150 at F1.8. F1.8. This is a 75 millimeter lens, but the right. equivalent of a 150 F1.8. And, and these optics are very good. <clears throat> you mentioned, um, you know, it's easy to hold, easy to use and all that. I noticed you have a, a special bracket on here. I tell do. Me, tell me about this. This bracket is the L bracket and grip from Really Right Stuff. This body is small. Some people complain about that. People with large hands say yeah. the buttons are too small. Right. There are individuals who have small hands and delicate hands who like it just exactly the way it is. Right. If you have larger hands like Andy here, I think you will definitely want the grip. I feel like the, it's it super really easy to hold. It yeah, it, secure in your And hand. it's the way we're used to holding our other bodies, you know, Precisely. just easily, just like that. Whereas Mark's GH3 is a little larger and a little heavier, right. and people with larger hands may prefer it, but they both are highly customizable cameras. <clears throat> That's a good point, because you can use both bodies. You can use this Olympus or mm -hmm. a Panasonic GH3, and I know Panasonic makes a couple other different bodies that you can use these lenses on, mm -hmm. and that's huge. In fact, one of the things that I like doing is taking some of this new technology and seeing what gimmicks they have, and one of them we discovered is that you have this autofocus feature that instantaneously blows up the image to 10x right. so that you can see whether it's in focus or not, and then while you're still pressing the trigger, it disappears back to your 
image to compose. This one does it too. You mentioned that you, you know, it's customizable by adding the grip, but there's got to be other customization in, built into this thing. It has two function buttons, one function one and function two, and all the buttons on the camera are programmable. So that this is a sophisticated device that one needs to practice with a little bit. Practice a little bit and then set it up and it's, and it's totally personalized yeah. for you. That's awesome. I'm totally convinced that I could replace my second body on Safari with well, that. And that's a good point because Jim and I talked about that before this trip, whether mm -hmm. we would bring a second body for a wider angle point of view. And the irony is, is that we agreed this <laughs> would be a good second body. Right. We both did that thinking we'd use it for the wider angle. But right. it turns out that we've used this lens more than anything, which is one to six, you know, 600 millimeter handheld is absolutely amazing. It is. It, it, it changes everything. These guys should be scared. Too big, yeah. <laughs> it looks like it might slip off the table there, Jim. <laughs>